I thank the Academy for having me here today. Uh, it's indeed a great pleasure and an honor for me to speak on the same podium as some of the other people that you have. Uh, my good friend uh, Mariano is here and I, I love to hear him speak and I love to be on the podium with him because there is so much that information that he provides and, and the rest of our speakers, Brendan and, and everybody else. So to me this is a pleasure, it's an honor. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I can be of some help to, uh, to our field in, in what we do, mental blood disorders. The majority of the signs and symptoms that we see, you will see here. This earache, ear stuffiness, TMJ pain, clicking, face pain, head pain, arm pain, tingling, neck pain, stiffness, in the upper back and lower back. This is taken from our daily sheet. Every patient who comes in fills this form out every time they come in. Now for us, this is important because if we start to treat somebody, we don't continue to treat them on the same basis of the old diagnosis that they came in with initially. Every time we see them, that diagnosis needs to be updated, re-looked at, make a decision whether or not those same things are, are in existence, and whether or not you change the nature of your treatment for that particular person. So the issue that is at hand is this. What I want you to pay attention to are the ones in red, face pain, head pain, and neck pain, and stiffness. Out of 524 patients that we saw at random, 372, 391, and 399 patients had these three things. This is a large population of patients who have the same types of pains that physicians treat as headaches, that uh, orthopedic people treat as neck pain, and that other physicians and primary care uh, providers consider to be related to the physical field or the physical medicine field. So my feeling is this is where we need to focus our attention. We, every one of us knows we can treat TM joint pain. We know we can treat clicking. We can, and, and that a lot of the ear aches and ear stuffiness are related to that particular jaw position. But what about this area down here? What of us, who of us really thinks that we, we actually treat this? And the more and more of our academy, of this academy, I think you people are much more aware than the people in the other academy uh, of, the, of the advent of our treatment falling into these categories. And, um, and I, athletic skills in school were bad, so these are six. Uh, myofascial pain dysfunction, TM joint internal derangement, cervical spinal dysfunctions, neurologic and orofacial pain, psychological factors, and now we've added sleep disorders to this whole milieu. So, what of these are easiest for us to treat? Well, the first three are probably the most affected by what you do in the mouth. The neurologic and orofacial pains can also be affected by what you do in the mouth, but they require some additional treatment. And psychological factors can, of course, be affected by what we do in the mouth, but they also require some additional help. Therefore, it's unusual to see a patient in chronic pain for the full body area to be able to be treated simply by appliance therapy by itself. Now, therefore, a multidisciplinary approach is probably the best way, if not the best way, at least it's probably the fastest way to get people better. And what are the areas that we look for? Well, first of all, in myofascial pain dysfunction, uh, TM joint internal derangement, cervical spinal dysfunction, these are what I consider peripheral problems. They're not necessarily, um, the, the, the primary issue is a peripheral problem. It's a musculoskeletal problem. And therefore, musculoskeletal problems lend themselves well to physical treatments, uh, uh, the neurologic and orofacial pains and psychological features are much more of a central nervous system disorder type problem and therefore lend themselves more to medications and to, and to counseling. And then of course sleep disorders we all know now is related, can be related to jaw position, can be related and is primarily related to airway space. But at the same time it is also a central, uh, central nervous system disorder because it happens during sleep. So if you can break this up easily 
and just from a from sake of a simple-minded assess, assessment, I look at these as primary peripheral, I look at these as primary central. Now, having said that, uh, everybody says, well, you can't divide them that way. And, and I agree. Truly, they're all central peripheral systems that are intertwining. But from the standpoint of deciding whether you as your, uh, as, a, as a dentist, can intervene quickly and, and com comfortably in this area. These are the areas that I find, if I see patients with this problem here, uh, the myofascial TM joint and, and cervical spine, I know that from a physical standpoint we can help them significantly.